Good evening. Welcome to California Today. I'm David Zhang. Here is a preview of some of today's top stories. San Francisco officials decided to hold a meeting outdoors, but the special session was quickly cut short after some locals started heckling the city leaders. Walmart is set to pay half a million dollars for selling brass knuckles. California's Attorney General says such items are prohibited in the state. Caitlyn Jenner, former Olympian and who is also a transgender, recently spoke out after a trans student competed in a girls' track race. San Francisco city leaders held a special meeting outdoors with the mayor yesterday to talk about open-air drug use. But they had to cut it short after protesters and locals started heckling and saying the officials are not doing enough to address the drug addiction. The San Francisco Board of Supervisors held a special outdoor public meeting with Mayor London Breed on Tuesday to talk about the city's handling of open-air drug dealing. But it was cut short after disruptions from unhappy residents and protesters. Several dozen people gathered as Peskin invited Breed to answer a question about plans to manage the drug crisis. You have homeless people. My question to Mayor Breed since you have rightly called the open-air drug dealing and a surge in overdose deaths a crisis. We are, we are acknowledging that problem, sir. The meeting was held at the city's United Nations Plaza, an area now known for drug dealing and usage just a couple blocks from City Hall. We can't keep speaking out of both sides of our mouth. On the one hand, we want change and we want to hold people accountable. And on the other hand, we're willing to let people get away with murder. Fentanyl, Nazi warfare, signs of shelter. Throughout the statements from Breed and Peskin, people in the crowd shouted at the officials. Some expressed their distrust in the officials, calling out policies that backfired. We got a fentanyl epidemic. It's worse than, and we, and we got it sanctuary policy and a sanctuary policy is protecting the criminals that's accused of bringing the drugs over here so why you got a sanctuary policy that protect the people that's accused of bringing the drugs over here the undocumented I think San Francisco is at a crossroads right now of which direction we want to go and that's unfortunate because really what we need is we need both things. We need a public health approach and we need a target specific law enforcement approach for the organized drug dealing. Peskin struggled to continue his statements and Breed conceded that the meeting could not move forward. I do think that the fact is I'm not sure without listening to the public that this is going to be the right forum to be able to answer your question thoroughly. In light of the mayor's statement, which I appreciate, we will recess this meeting to the Board of Supervisors Chamber, wherein the mayor will respond to the A for Ask question. Locals say city leaders have not addressed the problem at the root. No, they haven't done enough for the recovery of drug addiction. I walk down Mission Market. I walk downtown every day. I see the homelessness, I see the open air drug use, the open air drug dealing, and, um, and it's not the police fault. I fault the politicians because they're not doing anything. I work in a shelter. It's not a funeral home. It's turning into a funeral home over fentanyl. This says fentanyl, Nazi war camp. Stop killing us for money. They sending people into the shelter, allowing them to do fentanyl. I have to deal with multiple deaths every single day. They are dying in the toilet stool, in the showers, behind uh, uh, cars, behind the alley, and, and that's their last resting point because of fentanyl. It's not right. Either Mayor London Breed need to fix it or step down. It's over her head. She cannot handle it. Pittman says the funding shelters receive go to pacifying the drug addicts instead of rehabilitating them. We will give you the luminal foil. We will give you the straws. You can be in your bunk and get high. You can go to the shower and get high. You can sit on the toilet and get high. This is what they're doing with the funding. They're not saying, hey, you cannot bring it in here. If I tell someone they cannot bring their fentanyl in there, I get fired. If I tell them, hey, you cannot get high in here, I get fired. It's not right. San Francisco 
has the money, but I question the way that they're spending that money. We need treatment on demand in this city. We need to ex vastly expand residential treatment in San Francisco. We need to vastly expand availability of detox. And we need to be able to say when someone's ready to go into treatment, that within two to three hours they are in a treatment bed getting methadone and suboxone to start the process of weaning themselves off of fentanyl. After Breed and Peskin cut the meeting short, one woman was seen being detained by police and escorted away. Local media reported that she had thrown a brick towards the front of the crowd. Walmart will pay half a million dollars to settle allegations from California's Department of Justice, saying that it was selling brass knuckles on its website. This comes as California state law prohibits the sale and possession of such items. The Department of Justice conducted the years-long investigation and alleged that approximately 250 products that may be classified as brass knuckles were sold on the website by Walmart itself and its affiliated third-party vendors. It is unacceptable, let's be clear, that Walmart sold such dangerous weapons or even made their site available as a marketplace for their sale. And thanks to the successful work of our DA partners and my team at DOJ, Walmart, no longer will sell brass knuckles on their site. But Walmart said in a statement that it didn't violate any California laws and admits no liability of wrongdoing, but settled because it believes this agreement is in the best interest of all parties. The settlement will require Walmart to notify customers who have purchased the brass knuckles that the product is illegal in California. Walmart, which reported $611 billion in revenue last year, has over 300 physical locations employing 100,000 people throughout California. After a transgender teen student finished second place in a high school girls track race, backlash erupted. Caitlyn Jenner, former Olympian who is also a trans, recently spoke out. Caitlyn Jenner, formerly Bruce Jenner, was among those who spoke out after a male-born teenager won second place in a girls' race. As seen in footage posted by Twitter user Icons Woman, the teenager, Athena Ryan, finished second in a female varsity 1,600-meter run on Saturday at a state championship qualifier meet. Former Olympian Jenner disagrees with Ryan participating in a girls' race and took to Twitter to write, as somewhat of a track star myself and a trans person, this is wrong. Help me push back. And that trans people, quote, are being used by the radical gender ideology cult as political pawns. Ryan, a high school junior, finished with a time of nearly 4 minutes and 55 seconds in Dublin. While several women protested at the game with the words protect female sports on a banner, another didn't appreciate the message, saying, quote, it's none of your business what someone else does. And back in 2022, a transgender swimmer won an NCAA women's swimming title. There's been controversy over whether fairness or anatomy is an issue in the athletics world. And, and then when you're doing water polo, you know, you're in the water, you're grabbing the ball and everything else. Uh, it's very touch oriented, especially right near that net. And I talked to a water polo guy and he told me about you know, how it's just very, very touchy sport. Uh, we're talking about just little bathing suits. On April 6th, the U.S. Department of Education proposed changes to the decades-old Title IX to allow students to participate based on gender identification. While with older students, schools would be permitted to limit some trans students from participating, although this is on a case-by-case -case basis. As for the second place runner, Ryan is set to move on to a track and field championship next week. We'll take a short break now, but here's a look at what we have for you when we come back. Ahead of Memorial Day, Southern California celebrated the 50th anniversary of POWs returning home from the Vietnam War. Surveillance footage recently captured a young child being dropped into the U.S. from the border wall shared with Mexico. And a ghost town was recently sold to a mysterious buyer for over $22 million. The town was once a mine, then a prison site, but eventually grow empty again. 
those stories and more coming up on California Today. Welcome back to California Today. I'm your host, David Zhang. The police accidentally found a drug lab while looking for the parents of a wandering three-year-old in Fullerton. Here's what we know. After a report that a toddler was seen on the street alone, Fullerton police officers were sent to respond to the call. While looking for the parents, officers found a drug lab inside a home. Fullerton Police Department's Captain John Rada said nearby houses were also evacuated as officers evaluated the situation. The child was placed in protective custody while the search for his parents continues. Police say four Fullerton residents have been arrested in relation to the drug lab. Memorial Day is coming up. One Southern California city celebrated the anniversary of its veterans returning home with a parade. They recalled their days and how they've bonded together over the years. Former prisoners of war, or POWs, from the Vietnam War gathered at the Nixon Presidential Library in Yorba Linda, California on Tuesday to mark the 50th anniversary of their return home. They paraded through Yorba Linda and were greeted by hundreds of cheering supporters waving U.S. flags along the parade route. Later, an official ceremony took place on the grounds of the library. What we're celebrating is our return from captivity and the amazing opportunity to get together with some of my closest friends. You'll never find, find a more tightly welded group of friends because we've been through the same hellfire together. And uh, being here with them is just uh, wonderful. Being, just being able to be here 50 years after uh, we got home, is, is, it's a blessing. God bless. There's probably uh, almost half of our folks that came home with us don't have the opportunity to do this because we lost them along the way. McNish was captured after he was shot down over North Vietnam on September 4, 1966. My entire six and a half years in prison, I had absolutely zero doubt that my country would never forget me, that I would be brought home I back to my country whether I was alive or did not survive. Um, that, the strength of having that knowledge was part of what got me through six and a half years of hell. We all suffered in many, many ways that most people don't know anything about, you know, family separations and deaths and just bad circumstances, but we overcame it all. And talk about life-changing experiences. This group that you're meeting here today and those before us who now passed away accomplished amazing things with their lives after Vietnam. So I have no hard feelings against the Vietnamese at all. That's all in the past. And, we, and in, you know, in healthy life, you just press on. You don't harbor any grudge. You don't get even. You just, uh, you just press on in life. So luckily, we all pressed on in life. And here we are 50 years later. When some of us became congressmen, senators, businessmen, airline pilots, doctors, surgeons, uh, veterinarians, all walks of life. Uh, and and we, all, we all pressed on. The Nixon Presidential Library is marking the 50th anniversary of the return of the POWs with a new exhibition called Captured, Shot Down in Vietnam. A young child was dropped into the United States from a high border wall with Mexico in a surveillance video that captures a routine and highly risky occurrence. Surveillance video captured a four-year-old child being dropped from Tijuana, Mexico into San Diego. The jerky black and white images appear to show the child and one adult being aided by another adult over the wall, which rises as high as 30 feet. Authorities heard gunfire while tending to the child. In a tweet, Border Patrol Chief Rael Ortiz said, Remarkably, the child is okay. Do not trust smugglers. The child came with two adults, all of whom were in Border Patrol custody. It had not been confirmed if the adults were the child's parents or what nationality they were. It was also unclear if they would be released in the U.S. to pursue immigration cases or deported. Attempts to get over the wall happen daily, but are less common among young children. 
Researchers have found sharp increases in deaths and severe injuries associated with trying to overcome the San Diego Wall since it was heightened during the Trump administration. A study published last year found 16 deaths from 2019 to 2021, compared to zero from 2016 to 2018, and 375 severe injuries from 2019 to 2021, compared to 67 from 2016 to 2018. After Title 42 ended, authorities expected more illegal crossings, but the opposite has occurred so far. California legislatures have blocked a bill that would have held oil companies liable for the health problems of people. Critics of the bill said it would have been unfair to the oil and gas companies. Last week, state lawmakers blocked Senate Bill 556, which seeks to hold oil companies liable for, quote, health problems of people who live close to oil wells. The bill, authored by Democratic State Senator Lena Gonzalez, would have required oil companies to pay $1 million to people who have been diagnosed with cancer or other health problems as a result of oil wells. According to a statement, Gonzalez says, quote, Today we missed a key opportunity to advance legislation that would hold polluters accountable and prevent further harm to families who are just trying to stay healthy and have a better quality of life. But Cara Green, a spokesperson for the Western States Petroleum Association, says the bill would have been unfair to oil and gas companies and done more harm than good. Green says in a statement, quote, Billions of dollars and the fiscal mess that this bill would have caused to the state and local governments from their own liabilities, the fiscal responsibility of inherited wells, and the cost of the court system would be substantial. Last year, Governor Gavin Newsom signed a law that bans drilling new oil wells within 3,200 feet of areas such as homes and schools. But the law has not taken effect because the oil industry qualified for a referendum on the 2024 ballot. Someone anonymous recently bought a California ghost town for over $22 million. The historic town was once a mine and on track to become a renewable energy site. A mysterious buyer purchased a ghost town called Eagle Mountain in April for $22.5 million. According to a document, the buyer is Ecology Mountain Holdings. Eagle Mountain is a renewable energy site. An iron ore mine opened up in 1948 and had a population of about 4,000. After it closed in 1981, businesses around it also started winding down. In an attempt to revive the town, the Department of Corrections converted a shopping center into a private prison for low-risk inmates, but it closed down in 2003. The town was empty again. In 2015, an energy company purchased the rights to the pit mines to work on a $2 billion hydropower project that would boost renewable energy use in Southern California. Plans have been approved, but no work got started. Now let's check in with NTV's Carlos Reyes for our sports roundup. This is your California Sports Roundup, and I'm Carlos Reyes. Michael Conforto hit a two-run go-ahead home run in the seventh inning to lead San Francisco past Minnesota in Minneapolis for the Giants' third straight win. It was the second straight game that Conforto, who also doubled, hit what proved to be a game-winning home run for the San Francisco Giants. Alex Cobb picked up the win, allowing three runs on six hits over seven innings. He walked one and struck out eight. Camilo Doval hit a batter, but struck out the side in the ninth to earn his third team save as the Giants go to 500 for the first time since April 6th. Minnesota's Byron Buxton went two for four with a home run, a stolen base, and two RBIs, while teammate Michael A. Taylor also homered for the Minnesota Twins, which lost for the fifth time in its last six games. Giants four, Twins three. Los Angeles got seven scoreless innings from Griffin Canning and home runs from teammates Mickey Moniak, Matt Face, and Mike Trout on the way to a victory over Boston in Anaheim, California. Canning gave up just two hits and three walks while striking out a solid five. Teammates Matt Moore and Jacob Webb completed the two-hit shutout. 
Moniak and Thais each hit a solo homer off Red Sox starter Brian Bello, the only runs Bello allowed in seven innings. Angels 4, Red Sox 0. And in other sports news, Golden State's Stephen Curry was selected as this season's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Social Justice Champion. The league will donate $100,000 on Curry's behalf to the University of San Francisco Institute for Nonviolence and Social Justice. He is the third winner of the award after Carmelo Anthony won it in 2021 and Reggie Bullock last year. Curry's off-court interests are many. He's a co-chair of former First Lady Michelle Obama's When We All Vote initiative to help drive voter registration, education, and turnout. He participated in the National Basketball Social Justice Coalition's Freedom to Vote social media campaign to help advocate for the passage of the Freedom to Vote Act in the U.S. Senate. Through a nonprofit he founded with his wife Aisha, Curry has helped provide over 2 million meals and 500,000 books to students in Oakland, plus funded more than 1,500 teacher-led classroom literacy projects and remodeled four new play spaces. Now let's switch gears over to soccer. Continuing their 2023 Lamar Hunt US Open Cup campaign, the LA Galaxy advanced to the quarterfinals of the tournament with a 2-0 shutout win over LAFC at BMO Stadium on Tuesday night. Tyler Boyd scored the game-winning goal and Ricky Puig scored his first goal of the tournament while goalkeeper Jonathan Klinsman recorded six saves in the round of 16 win over the Los Angeles Football Club. LA Galaxy midfielder Ricky Puig had this to say about his team's success. Bueno. It's a trophy nonetheless. It depends on how you want to face it. They faced it one way and we played it like another final and we won tonight. I think we deserve it, and I'm very happy to win my first El Trafico Derby. The Galaxy will return back home in preparation for their matchup against the Charlotte Football Club this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. from Dignity Health Sports Park. That is it for today's Sports Roundup. Thank you for watching. I'm Carlos Reyes. Thanks, Carlos, and that's all we've got for you tonight. We would like you to join us again on California Today every weekday at 8 p.m. Make sure to check out our broadcasts at ntd.com slash California dash today. You can also find all of our top latest clips there, ready to share with friends and family. Send us a message on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Gunjing World, or through our email, california.today at ntd.com. I'm David Zhang. Have a wonderful evening.